In this video, we will try to perform vector search with Spring AI and see how it works. The most basic one is simple vector store. And then we do have Chroma vector store, PG vector store, Pine vector store. There are a few more. We will start with simple vector store because this is an inbuilt vector store in Spring AI and we do not need to install anything additionally to write a vector search application. We are going to get started with simple vector store. And if you want to get more details around it, then you can go to Spring AI page and they do have this vector databases tab over here once you click on it like it will give you the detail about vector da databases the api overview how this vector search works and what kind of databases it supports so here you can see there are a lot of vector store available over here and you can use like any any one of it if you do not want to install anything else then you can get started with simple vector store and we will try to write a simple application using this simple vector store and we'll try to get some idea like how this vector search works in spring ai so before actually going into the code i just wanted to give you some basic idea how this vector storage works so first of all we are going to have some data with us on which we have to perform some vector search so that data needs to be added into vector databases and this data needs to be added in the form of document so even though like if we have a text file pdf file or any kind of data that needs to be converted into document object and then only it can be stored into the vector database so as soon as it gets stored into the vector database the data gets converted into vectors so this conversion happens using embedding models because in our case we are using openai so openai has embedding model which is known as openai text embedding ada 002 so this particular model will take the text and will convert into the form of vectors vectors is nothing but an array or list of doubles so you will see like some numbers coming out like once the conversion happens and that is called vectors now once the data gets stored over here after that like any user can perform any kind of query on this databases so user can come and he can perform a query now this query is going to get converted into vector first so once the query is performed like it will try to give you a response and this response is going to depend upon the similar documents for a given query and this similar document is going to be retrieved based on the similarity search and there is a specific algorithm for that which is known as k nearest neighbor so it will retrieve the similar vector and then it will try to convert it into a text and that text is going to pass it to the users so that is how this whole vector search works now we will go over the code and see like how we can write a simple application using this so for that first of all what exactly we need to do we need to go to star.spring.io here you can give your application name and everything so earlier when we have to add the dependency for openai we were going into this repositories spring ai repository because it was not in the release mode so we were taking the dependency and repositories from here and adding it into the code but now we don't have to do it you can just search the dependency over here only so if i search for openai you can see there are two options one is azure openai and another is openai so we can add this openai dependency okay, if you have to create an endpoint then we can add another dependency spring web adding the ai dependency is going to be much easier so you just have to add it over here and generate your uh, project and once you generate your project like you can just go ahead in the in the intellij and just open it from here so now to get started with the code uh, we have to create three folders one is config one is controller and one is services also we have to add Add your open AI API key over here is spring AI dot open AI dot API key and once this is done then we can go ahead and get started so first thing what we need to do is create this config file and under that you can just name your class anything I have just named it vector store config because we are going to get started with the simple vector store so for that first of all we have to create a config and then after that we have to define a bean over here in this bean we I am just calling it vector store and under that we have to pass this embedding client so so this embedding client is going to come from here from your AI dependency so you have to add your embedding embedding client over here and after that like you just have to call this simple persistent vector store which is again going to come from this AI vector store 
and after that you have to pass this embedding client in this now this simple persistent vector store would be act as our vector database and this embedding client would help us to generate vectors for our text so once your configuration is done then we can go ahead into our services and in this services you can see like i have just auto wired this vector store so whatever actually we have created over here uh, this vector store i am just calling it in the vector services and after that i have just defined a simple method so this is a simple vector store and here i am just passing a query this would mimic the query that user is going to put and based on the query it's going to give us a response as i covered in the diagram just to perform the vector search we cannot perform it on the simple text or pdf or word document all your text data needs to be converted into document so here we are using this document and this document also you can see it's coming from our spring ai so this document would help us convert this text so i have just passed like three text over here and that is going to be stored as a document object and because there are multiple document objects so we are going to store it in the list so once this is done what exactly we need to do so so all this uh, document object we have to store it in our vector database so here we are having vector database as our inbuilt simple vector store so we are going to use that and add all these documents into this and after that like we have to go ahead and perform a similarity search so as we highlighted in our diagram also like if a user has to pass a query then it is going to perform a similarity search and, and it will pick a vector which is more closer to the given vector so this is how it works so we are going to first perform a very simple search and here we are going to pass a query so here you can see we are passing a query and this query we are passing it over here it will try to identify similarity search based on the KNN algorithm and we'll try to see okay, which particular vector stored in the database is more similar to the given vector. and it will at the end it will return the results now to hit this we are going to define a controller class and in this controller class there is one endpoint we are using like as gen so as soon as anyone hits this endpoint up and pass a query then we have to get the results out of it. now to get the results out of it what exactly we are doing so we do have this vector services which we have defined over here and after that we do have a simple vector method in which we are passing a query and in the query you can see first of all we are retrieving get zero get content and that two string now this is required because if you want to get the exact text then we have to write this as well if you are not adding this then it, it won't give you a result in the text it will actually give you results in the embedding and i will show you like how that results is going to look like so first of all let me just open postman this is how my endpoint is going to look like and i'm passing a query which is going to be query spring AI and what i'm hoping like once i hit this endpoint should be able to give me the results which are more similar to spring ai so let me just go back to my code and try to run it now so you can see my code is up and running so now i can go to postman and try to hit this endpoint so as soon as I hit this endpoint, you can see like I have got this particular response and this is basically coming from here. And here you can see like because I have passed the Spring AI, so it has taken this particular line. So in the first line, we do have a lot of Spring AI written. So it has taken this particular up and then put it in the output. Let me show you like what if I don't use this particular methods over here, then what would be the output? So as you can see, like as soon as I have converted it, it's asking uh, me to convert it. And because we know the output is going to be of document type, so I can just put document over here. This is going to be list. So I can just define list of document. Now, if you are going to print everything in document, then the output would be in the embedding format. So let me try to rerun this, rerun our application and I will try to hit this endpoint again. And you can see this is how the embedding is going to look like. These are the array and you can see these are the doubles and or float numbers which we would see over here. And this is how your text data is going to get stored into a vector database. So that's why to get a response in a proper format, we have to use something like this, where we have to go to at the content level. And similarly, we can just convert it into a string. This is required to get the output in the correct format. Another thing what we can try in this vector services, suppose like if there are multiple documents are matching with your queries, then you are going to retrieve multiple documents. So, but there are a way to handle it. Suppose like if you just want to get first document. So in that case, what exactly you need to do? So 
there are few more things that you can try upon so instead of directly passing a query we have to remove this query and we have to use search request and we have to go for default you can just see a lot of options over here and this is how actually you can control the output of your response so with the query definitely we have to pass a query so i will pass a query over here and after that talk it so suppose like i just want to retrieve first document so it will just give me the first one and also there are a few more things that you can try upon if you want to apply any kind of filter or the similarity threshold so this will help the algorithm to retrieve the documents which are matching with this similarity threshold so by default is going to be 0.75 or 75 percent so any document like which are matching 75 percent with your query they will try to retrieve all those documents but you can also increase it so if you want to get closer to to 90 percent or something then you can also use this and just put like 0.8 or 0.9 so that like you can go more closer to the document which you want to retrieve and let me try to add one more document in this and we'll try to rerun it now i will modify this query and i will just try to write world and then i will try to run this now you have got the world is big and one more thing I wanted to highlight. So as soon as you hit this endpoint, right? So you can see like it's calling embedding client and it's converting all this text into a document object. And these are the document ID for those uh, document objects. So this document ID is for the first one, then second, the third and fourth. And this is how your document is going to get stored into vector database. That's why the embedding client is also important. And that's what we have highlighted earlier. Like it will help you to convert your text into vectors. Now out of all this option, it it has just picked this third one because it was more closer to what actually we were asking for and i have specifically asked like okay i just need first document and the similarity threshold should be equal to 80 or more than this one yeah so instead of one you can also pass two over here you can if you don't want to increase the threshold you can remove that as well all this information is already listed down over here you can go all these options the top key thing like knn algorithm then the threshold by default is 0.75 then the another filter expression if you want to pass on some kind of criteria then you can also pass it so this is how you can play with the vector search so just try this option you will find this code in the description below so you can take it play with this just try to add some text it will help you to learn how this vector search works in Spring AI. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.